Take a look on the screen. I want to show you two scriptures. Verse 18, Exodus 31, verse 18. When he had finished speaking with him upon Mount Sinai, he gave Moses the two tables of the testimony, tablets of stone written by the finger of God. Okay? Only God wrote the t that. He did not entrust Moses to write this. Okay? No one other than God himself would write it with his own finger. Okay? Moses, you're not to write this. I'm to write it. In fact, think about this. Let's step back. Moses, or the children of Israel with Moses are at Mount Sinai, and God speaks the Ten Commandments to them. He speaks those words to him, and later Moses would, would record it in the Bible, in, in, in Exodus, in, in, in the Torah. But God writes the Ten Commandments himself on tables of stone. Now you're saying, well, wouldn't the second, didn't the first set of tables of stone get broken? Yes, they were. We're going to talk about that in the next lesson, but right now, take a look on the screen. You'll see Exodus 34, verse 1. Now the Lord said to Moses, cut out for yourself two stone tablets like the former ones, and I will write on the tablets the words that were on the former tablets, which you shattered. Now we'll address that in next lesson, but I just want to say this. God writes them himself both times. Okay, doesn't entrust it to anyone else. Now, those of you who say, well, we're under the new covenant. What do we have to do with the Old Covenant? What does this have to do with us now? Well, I'm glad you brought that point up. Let's take a look at Jeremiah verse 31. Uh, Jeremiah 31 verse 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant which they broke, although I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. You kind of saw we did a little bit of study. This is all that the Lord was who all that the Lord has said we will do, and they didn't do it. Okay, they broke that covenant. Keep reading, verse thirty-three. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and on their heart I will write it, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wow! Look at that. We transition old to new covenant. This is the new covenant. God would, instead of writing it on tables of stone, he would write it on the tables of our heart. In fact, pick it up in Hebrews 8, verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds, and I will write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Hebrews 10, verse 15. One more scripture verse. We're going to unpack a great truth right here in a second. And the Holy Spirit, Hebrews 10, verse 15. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws upon their heart and on their mind, I will write them. Important to understand mind. We'll study more about that in Revelation 13. I will put my laws upon their hearts and on their minds, I will write them. And he says then, and their sins and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. One question I have to ask you this is, how does God actually write his law on our hearts? That's, that's a reasonable question. How would he do that? I mean, he wrote with his own finger the commandments on tables of stone. That's clear, multiple times in the Old Testament. How does he establish the new covenant? How does he write the commandments on the, our hearts? I want to compare scripture with scripture so you can really understand what's going on here. And there's a story that Jesus interacts with the Pharisees and they say because he casts out demons by Beelzebub. And Jesus says, you know, if I cast out, how, how kingdom divided against itself can't stand. I want, I want you to pick up that storyline in Matthew 12, and I just want to read through it. I want to make a significant point, and we'll bring this study to a close. Matthew 12, verse 22. Then a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute was brought to Jesus, and he healed him. 
so that the mute man spoke and saw. All the crowds were amazed and said, This man cannot be the son of David, can he? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, This man casts out demons only by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons. Watch what happens next. Verse 25. And knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and any city or house divided itself will not stand. Verse 26. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? If by Beelzebub, if I by Beelzebub cast out demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? For this reason, they will be your judges. Verse 28. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. That last verse I want to focus in. I want to focus in very closely. Look up on the screen. I've got it in big letters. The last verse, Matthew 12, 28, right there. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Now, we know the Gospels tell the stories of these events in slightly different ways. So I want to go over and see exactly what's said in Luke chapter 11 about the same story. I'm not going to read the whole storyline to you. I just want to focus in on the key verse here. See it up on the screen. Verse 20, but if Jesus is speaking, but if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Wow, now that's very interesting. First, he casts out demons by the Spirit of God. And then in Luke, he records it slightly differently, same storyline, but if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Wow, do you see that? Spirit of God, finger of God, same thing. Same thing. So now we have to ask ourselves, how does God write his law upon our hearts? He doesn't entrust anyone to write it. He doesn't entrust you to write it. It's not through you. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, finger of God, he writes his law upon your hearts. Amazing, amazing truths right there. Because we can't walk in obedience without the Holy Spirit. God has to write, if you will, software code on our hearts. We have to choose to follow it. We have to choose. He's, he's, he gives us a free will, free choice. He says, if you want to walk in obedience, you can. I want to walk in obedience. I don't know about you. And keep all the commands of God. Not just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I want to keep all of them because it's a law of love. Love your Lord, your God, with all your heart and soul, soul and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. God writes it on our hearts. Look at this one last scripture verse here. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 12. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 2, Paul speaking, You are our letter written in our hearts, known and read by all men, being manifested that you are a letter of Christ, cared for by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such confidence we have through Christ toward God, not that we are adequate in ourselves to consider anything as coming from ourselves, but our ad adequacy is from God. That's a really important point to underscore. We are not adequate in ourselves. It's not about our strength and our power, our might, our willpower to do and obey. We are adequate because the Holy Spirit lives in us. The Spirit of Christ lives in us. Okay, we were crucified and died with Christ. It is not I who live, but Christ who lives within me and lives within you to live a holy and obedient life. Amazing scriptures here. Verse 6, who also made us adequate as servants of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So here we know the rock, the law is the source of our moral certainty. There's no question about it. There's no changing. 